Good morning, Blazers. Happy Thursday. Welcome to literature class. So, first thing I want you to do today, I want you to get out your notebook, and I would like you to record today's date, which is Thursday, 827, and I want you to see if you can find three problems in the email to your left. So go ahead and hit pause and see if you can find all of the problems. All right, let's see how you did. So, number one. There's no subject line. Remember, in the subject line of an email, we want to do what? We want to summarize the email to let the, the recipient know very generally what the email is all about. All right, let's look at that first sentence of the email, the, the actual message itself. Dear Mr. O, I see a problem. We need a comma, right? When you address the person you're speaking to, you say, dear so-and-so, comma. One thing I want to work on this year is reading out loud. Whenever I start reading, Gary falls asleep almost immediately. Don't even get me started on Mr. Krabs. He's so cheap he can't even pay attention. Okay, that all looks fine. The very end of the letter, there's a small problem that's very nitpicky, and that is after you say thanks for reading or sincerely, comma, you want to have your name at the bottom. So that's kind of nitpicky. That's it's not that it's wrong necessarily not to skip a line, but it is conventional. So in general, when you are composing an email, you'd say thanks for reading, comma, you'd start a new line, and then you'd write your name. Um, so anywho, that's what an email should look like. Very good. Let's move on, shall we? Would you like to go on an adventure of literary proportion? Hmm. Can I think about it? No? Okay. Would you like to go on an adventure of literary proportions? Sure. <laughs> cool, let's do it. You take two steps before tripping and falling flat on your face. Ouch. You okay? What'd you even trip on? Gosh, this adventure is off on the wrong foot. Huh. The smallest book I've ever seen. <laughs> well, that's embarrassing. This huge book that you left on the ground. My bad! Should we open the book? Do I even have a choice? Nope! Alright, well that makes it easy. Should we open the book? Absolutely. You try to open the large, dusty book, but it is so old, you really struggle. It sounds like a rusty door. It's so old. You sneeze. God bless you. The journey is lit? Huh. The time has come to venture forth. So grasp your compass. Point it north. Onward, wander toward the end. Don't stumble now that you've began. Sheath your sword and leave it fettered. Heroes know to fight with letters. The simpler path is not always best on this literary quest. Do you have your writing implement? Always. Cool. All right, my friends. Welcome to Lit Class 2020. So great, grateful that I get to teach you guys this year. I have tons of fun things planned. I am hoping to show you guys how to make interactive PowerPoints so you could have interactive choose-as-you-go stories, kind of like uh, what you just saw there in my PowerPoint. And I'm going to show you guys hopefully how to make a website this year. And we're going to work on reading a lot. And we're going to work on speaking a lot. And we're going to do a lot of writing this year. So, today I want to start Lit Class proper. The last two days we spent a lot of time talking about you know how to do things on the computer, which is really important because we're learning virtually for the first three weeks of school. But today I want to get started into Lit. So, I need you to get out your Lit Notebook. The first page of your lit notebook probably looks something like this. You've got your bell work, you've got some notes, right? Um, 
And what I want you to do in your lit notebook is I want you to skip 10 pages. So literally open your notebook, literally, and count out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And on the 10th page, I want you to write at the very top, writing territories. And I would also like you in the top right corner of your page to put a number 10 and then to circle the number 10. Okay, so please hit pause if you are not already done. Today, we are going to brainstorm writing territories. But what is a territory? What's a writing territory? If you think about the word terra, terra means earth. So a territory is the ground that you want to cover this year in your writing. Okay, now that's an idiom, so, right? We're you're not actually going to cover ground. You know, it's not like you're putting a, a blanket on the ground. Okay. So what do I mean exactly? Well, I'm going to explain. Writing territories are stories that you want to tell. They're stories that are inside you that they need to get out. They need to get onto a piece of paper. There are genres that you are aspiring towards. I have always wanted to write a dystopia, but, um, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't know if I'm good enough. Well, I'm going to practice. I'm going to write an awesome dystopia this year, okay? Or maybe you want to write a fantasy story, some, a story with magic. Or maybe you just want to write a normal story about normal people doing normal things. That's cool. Maybe, you know, you're writing territories. That would include poems that you want to write. Poems that you want to scream. Poems that you want to cry. Poems that you want to smile as you read them. Speeches that you will deliver in a persuasive fashion. So writing territories are basically just things that you want to write about. Speeches, poems, stories, short stories, long stories, medium-sized stories. All right. So today, we are going to brainstorm. That's another idiom. There's not actually a storm in my brain, though it might seem like it. We're going to brainstorm. What you are going to do is you... I'm going to generate a list of things that you want to write about, okay? And in fact, that is actually going to be your homework, which is due on Monday. So you have today, Thursday, you have tomorrow, Friday, and I want it submitted to me by Monday, okay? You are going to make a list of all your writing territories, those stories, poems, speeches that you want to write about, and you're going to submit a picture of your notebook, all right, so this is what my notebook looked like until, you know, 10 minutes later when I made a nice list. I filled out two pages of writing territories, and I'm going to keep adding to them. Anytime you're inspired, you think of a story that you want to tell, something you want to write about, I want you to jot it down at this in this part of your notebook, okay? So here's what's going to happen. I am going to read right now to you my writing territories, the things that I want to write about. And what I want you to do while I read is anytime you feel inspired, I want you to hit pause. If I tell you about a story that I want to write and you feel like, oh, something similar happened to me, I want you to jot it down. Okay? So hit pause at any time because I'm going to go pretty quick through my territories. And at any time you feel inspired, hit pause and jot them down. Okay, so if you think about it, basically what you're doing while I read is your homework. Does that make sense? All right, so, you know, you got your notebook open. Are you ready? You ready to listen? Here is what I want to write about. Funny school stories. When blank, I won't tell you his name, when he locked himself in his locker and I had to get him out. When there was something in Mr. O's closet. What was that in Mr. O's closet? When Blank flipped his desk during his Most Magnificent Thing performance. Sword fights in Romeo and Juliet. And Alice in Wonderland when we sent in a little bill. That was a fun story to tell as well. Scary school stories. That one time when a dog got into the playground and started chasing around Blank. That one time when I jumped the fence to get a kickball and my pants ripped. That was embarrassing. School when I was a kid. 
eighth grade when we had our shaving cream fight, having lunch and having Lacapo's pizza delivered to school, having Fazoli's at lunch and having 14, 14 breadsticks, Ghostbusters, the absolute best game ever in gym class. It was awesome. You had a bowling pin and this squishy little ball, and you had to protect your bowling pin, but also knock down other people's bowling pins. Setting the endurance record in gym class. All right. Now, I've got a bunch of writing territories about sports, because I love sports. There was the time when I tried to quit football in fifth grade, and my coach said, no. And then I played football for four more years. Running at Culver. Jumping in the lake afterwards. In high school, when I broke four minutes and 25 seconds in the mile. When I got a stress fracture in high school. And then I had dreams almost every night that one of my legs was shorter than the other. Those weren't great dreams. Uh, when I hit that buzzer beater in eighth grade, right in that one person's face. That was awesome. Dislocating my shoulder while playing basketball. That wasn't too fun. When I cut my face and had a big uh, gash, and then I told my students it was a caterpillar bite, and they believed me. Uh, now I have some family stories. When my mom's purse was stolen at our old house on Angela Boulevard, and we had to hide in the closet. That one time I locked my brother Jamie out of the house, and then he was late for his baseball game. He wasn't very happy. The one time I was babysitting my little sisters and there was a bat flying around trying to eat us. It was horrifying. It was doing its echolocation thing. It was creepy. So I got out a te tennis racket and saved my sisters. Uh, when my grandma took me to Toys R Us and bought me a ton of Hot Wheels. And then I felt really guilty. When my mom read me Harry Potter number one on her lap. Well, I was sitting on her lap. Planting a garden with my grandpa one last time before he passed away. We planted zinnias and Hungarian wax peppers and jalapenos. Ralph, my beloved cactus, when he was kidnapped, or plant-napped, rather. Ah. Here's an idea. I want to persuade every human being to have a garden at their house. I want to persuade the government to give tax breaks to people who have gardens, people like me. I, I want to spend, you know, I want to pay less taxes, but so does everyone. Uh, uh, an essay where you try to persuade people not to fertilize or water their lawn. I think that's very wasteful. An essay where I persuade students to learn guitar or any instrument for that matter. Ah, here's an idea for a dystopian story. There's an apocalyptic event. There's a boy and his grandpa, and they live, dun-dun-dun, next to a lake. <laughs> and in order to survive, they make chinampas, which are the floating gardens that the Aztecs used to build. I think that'd be super cool. All right, floating gardens. That's epic. You don't even have to water because they're, they're in water. Here's an idea. Uh, a cartoon, so like a series of cartoons where I use pictures of Milo and then I put little like cartoon thought bubbles or word bubbles over the pictures and, you know, tell stories. You know, so like a cute little picture of Milo. Milo's my dog. And, you know, maybe he's a detective or, yeah, something like that. Um, oh, okay. I love to drink kombucha. Kombucha is fermented tea. And there's this ooey, gooey, slimy thing that grows in the kombucha. So what if I told a story about the scoby? That's what the slimy thing is called. It grows and grows and flops out of its vessel and then flops onto the floor and it just starts eating everything in its path like a blob. Um, oh, other embarrassing events. Messing up while playing the guitar in high school. Not remembering the last chord of the song, so I just I just kept playing longer and longer. It, it was really awkward. It, it was really bad. Um, oh, favorite artists to look up images of and then to be inspired by while I write. Kandinsky, Pablo Picasso, Monet, Georgia O'Keeffe. Maybe I tell a story from the point of view of a pumpkin or from the point of view of a bug, like a cucumber beetle. That might be kind of fun. Uh, the story of Kimchi the koala, 
and, which you guys, you know, unfortunately saw a little bit of yesterday. And yeah, the literary adventures. I'm going to be writing a story which will be a literary adventure that you and I will be going on. And I think it's going to involve Kimchi the koala. Uh, I think he's going to be the protagonist. But we'll, we'll kind of see. I have uh, a lot of koalas this year. I got a lot of stuffed koalas for free. I didn't buy them, but I love koalas. They're awesome. Uh, I love eucalyptus, the smell of the oil. So those are my writing territories, okay? What I want you to do is I want you to make a list of stories, make a list of things that you would want to write about, speeches, persuasive essays, uh, anything, memories that you have, all right? Make a list in your notebook. I want you to shoot for two whole pages, at least. Show me what you can do, all right? And I want you to submit a picture of your notebook. So you are writing this in your notebook, and I want you to submit a picture, all right? I encourage you to use the Google Classroom app. If you have that app on your phone, it is super easy to do. Okay, and in fact, I'm actually going to uh, show you how to submit that tomorrow. All right, now you may have noticed I already made a video showing how to do it, and it's on the Google Classroom FAQ page. So if you don't know how to submit a picture, you could go to the FAQ page, but I will certainly show you how to do it tomorrow. Okay, I'm actually going to show you during our live literature class tomorrow. So be on the lookout for our uh, for the schedule of when I will be having my live lesson with you guys tomorrow. Once again, the homework is not due until Monday, so you have today, Thursday, tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. But turn it in as soon as you have it completed. All right. Now, I'm going to leave this image right here. This will be the last thing you see at the end of the video. So if you want to hit pause, here are a bunch of ideas, a bunch of, you know, topics, if you will, that might help you as you are brainstorming your writing territories. All right. Happy Thursday, my dudes. Can't wait to have a live class with you tomorrow. You guys rock.